How's it going everyone? Today I am going to be teaching you how to build a resume. And this video is really meant for young adults that are in college or just getting out of college and probably won't have much as far as experience goes uh, to add to your resume, but I'm going to break down all the different sections and show you some things that you can include to make you stand out on that resume. But before we get into those specific sections and what to include there and what not to include there, I just want to give you some overall tips as far as resume building is concerned. My first piece of advice is going to be that your resume should more so be a template. And when you're applying for a job, you should really then gear and edit that resume to stand out for that potential position that you're applying to. And this is a lot more simpler than you think. Because on that, on that job page, on that job description, it's going to tell you all the responsibilities, all the tasks, all the things that are expected out of you. And you could gear what you already have within your resume in order to better fit the job that you are applying for. It's important to know what kind of job that you are applying to. And within the exercise and health science field, there are a lot of different options and many different kinds of jobs and many different types of facilities that you could potentially work in. A lot of them are going to deal with you directly working with patients or clients, whether it be one-on-one or in a group setting. And so if that type of job is one you're applying to, you need to highlight that within your previous experience. If it's more of a managerial position, they want to know your ability to lead, to delegate tasks, uh, to keep up with certain you know, aspects of a facility. And so again, you know, your resume, your past experience, your skills, they should highlight all these things based on the type of job you're applying to. Another thing is realizing that you could always improve upon your resume, whether it be signing up for workshops or certifications or volunteering or interning. The more exposure that you have to a field, the more you could put on your resume and the better it is going to look when you actually apply for jobs. I'm not here to crush anyone's dreams, but one other piece of advice I'll give you is do not apply to jobs that are way outside of your pay grade, way outside of your experience level or education. And I'm not saying that but to put anyone down because I know that anyone with enough hard work, with enough education, with enough time can get to their dream job if they are dedicated enough. And I'm definitely not saying that you can't get there eventually, but you have to realize that you need to work your way up to that. Look, even personally, I I thought of the idea of teaching college courses about this major and this field when I was an undergrad. I had ideas of it, but it wouldn't make sense at the age of 21 years old for me to start applying to professorships at universities because I wasn't experienced enough at that level. I didn't have enough information. I didn't have enough knowledge in order to excel at that. And so it would have just been a waste of time and effort to try to apply for these jobs uh, that at that time I wasn't able to get, but with experience and with time and me working within this field and me getting uh, my master's degree and building upon, I was able to build up that resume to the point where now I'm the one sitting here teaching you guys. And so again, you'll get there. You'll get there eventually, but start small and build it up as you're going within this field. One last tip before we get into the actual building of a resume, do not lie. Do not lie at all on the resume because if they find out that is not going to be good for you at all. So, you know, it's it's okay. I know a lot of you probably don't have much to contribute onto your resume as of right now. Um, you know, a lot of you are 18 to 21 years of age, maybe have not had that job experience yet within this field, but that's to be expected. And so again, as soon as you can, Get your foot in the door, uh, get exposure, whether it be through volunteering, that's something you could put. And so, you know, whatever you could do right now in order to get ahead, 
um, that that would be great. But again, just don't lie about your current position because that could be potentially really, really bad if you get caught. All right, so let's actually build a sample resume for someone that is probably in your position, taking college classes, may or may not have had previous experience in the workforce and wants to gear their resume in order to get an entry level fitness job. And so just a couple of things about resumes overall, um, as far as color is concerned on your resume and text, don't do anything crazy. Times New Roman, um, you know, is perfect font. Um, you know, you, you want something that is, looks professional and is legible. And I wouldn't really go, I myself would not go for anything other than black text. If you want to add a certain amount of color, I would only add like one other text. Like if you if you have headings or uh, subheadings and you want to include that or highlight that, that's okay. But it's got to be a dark color. It's got to be legible and it's got to look good. So my my advice: stick to black and white um, in a legible font. Also, do not include a picture of yourself. Just don't do it. I think the only exception to that would be if it is um, like a modeling gig or an entertainment gig where you are putting uh, your face out there, um, like a headshot or something like that. But I would include that separate from the resume anyway. So no pictures, right? It's not necessary. They're, they're going to meet you eventually. Um, just don't do it. Also, try to leave out unnecessary information. No one cares if you DJ'd your friend's house party. That is not a thing that is going to apply to most of the jobs that you are looking for. So there are skills that you know you can highlight, and then there are maybe experiences and skills that you don't need to highlight. Again, tailor this thing and focus this thing uh, for that position that you are applying to, and only try to include relevant information there. The first part of a resume is the heading, and up top should be your name in pretty big text to highlight who you are. And then in addition to your name, you should include your contact information. Um, most resumes are going to include a home address, your phone number, make sure it's one that you uh, constantly check, not a work phone number. Uh, so if they contact you, you are quick with responding. And then your email. And so just again, making sure that it is one that you are going to keep up with and uh, one that you constantly keep an eye on so you could have good responses. So, you know, as far as setup is concerned, you don't need to do it this way. I'm sure there are other uh, headings that may look better. Uh, but again, it's, it's very simplistic as, as far as resumes are concerned. I wouldn't overthink it too, too much. And so for this part, your name and your contact information. Next, we have the objective. And it's important to note that when most people look at resumes, they actually don't look for that long and they pick up very few key things in a short amount of time. I believe averages for resume um, viewing are about 15 seconds. So it's going to take a lot to jump out of that page. And having a firm objective can put you in a position to see whether or not you're going to be a fit for that company. And so for Jonathan here, we've put an objective to promote a physical, uh, sorry, to promote physical exercise and healthy behaviors to clientele. My goal is to become the owner of my own health and fitness facility in my hometown of Dunwoody, Georgia. And this is just an example to sort of say, hey, this is what I want to do uh, with my career. And if, if John here is applying to a health and fitness facility, um, that is going to stand out. And then just also giving them an idea that I have aspirations of doing bigger things. And this is part of my long-term career path. So your objective in a few sentences should just sum up what are you trying to achieve within your career and within this field. For the next section, we are going to have, you know, a little bit of differing opinions on what to put. Um, I would say that at your level, it's probably better to put education first. 
Um, although, you know, I, once you've been in the field, it may be a little bit more relevant to put your experience then after objective. So this is really going to be up to you. I'm going to present it in a way um, where I think better fits those of you who are young adults and first entering the field. And that is just to highlight the education you've already had first. First, start with your undergraduate degree, even if you have not yet obtained the undergraduate degree. And it's easy just to put in there your expected date of graduation. This way they have an idea uh, when you will be wrapped up with your program. Include your major. Uh, if you have a minor, include that as well. And the other thing that may be debated is whether or not to put your GPA in there. And I'll just say this, if it's good, then put it in there. So if you're above a 3.5 or probably even closer to 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 4.0, throw it in there. It looks good and it's a good GPA. And so why not flaunt uh, the fact that you have done well? If you've, um, let's say, done better in your major than you have in those intro level math courses and English courses, then you could throw your major GPA in there as well. Um, I would just avoid throwing GPAs in there if they are not, you know, exceptional. And I really think it's better just to, um, you know, not include it then because a lot of, a lot of uh, people, managers who are going to hire you, they're not going to really care. As long as you have obtained that degree, that's what they're really looking for. This is one I'm a little bit iffy on adding, but I threw it in there anyway, and that's relevant courses. If you have experience, that's probably going to be more important, but if you're really looking for things to throw in to your resume, it may help you out. And again, it's just going to be based on the job that you're applying to. So if you're applying to a job in a clinical setting, then you'll wanna let them know that you took clinical exercise physiology, um, a medical terminology class, that you've had experience in the lab conducting certain assessments. And so, you know, different courses can uh, stand out if you are applying to specific jobs. The next section is experience, and arguably this is the most important section of the resume. There are a few different things that you could list here, but first what you're going, going to want to list are actual jobs that you've had that apply to the job that you are currently uh, looking to interview for. And so, you know, list those relevant experiences first. And then if you do not have any relevant experiences, then list any other types of jobs that you have had. If you haven't had a job yet, then any sort of internship would work as well or any sort of volunteering that you have done. So just listing any sort of experience that could help you stand out and uh, highlight the different skills that you have. In this section, we are going to be highlighting the different responsibilities and the different things you did whether it be in a job or an internship. And so when we start off each responsibility, we are going to use these action verbs. And again, it's important to go to that job description page and see what responsibilities you'll be doing there. So when you uh, edit your resume, you can then sort of gear it towards the position you are applying to. And so within the health and fitness field, words like instruct and taught and led are very important because as exercise and health science professionals, that's what we do. We instruct people, we uh, teach clientele, we teach patients, um, we assess patients. And so those things are important to highlight in the uh, relevant experience. And then for a managerial position, you'll be looking at things like led and managed and supervised. Um, but you know, you could, again, you could just gear these verbs in order to match that type of job that you are applying for. So for jobs, you want to list the title of the position, what company you worked for, the responsibilities that you had and the time that you served or worked there. If you are, you know, just heard that and you were like, well, I don't have any of that. I don't have an internship. I never did an internship or volunteer work or, um, you know, never had a job before. Well, then it's probably time to consider starting something. Um, because again, the earlier you get your foot in the door within this field, the better. 
The more that you can build your resume up early on, the better it's going to look when you go to start applying to actual full-time jobs. So even if it's just four hours a week, shadowing, volunteering, uh, interning, part-time job, try to get out there within this field. And a lot of times that doesn't require much. Getting a personal trainer or group fitness certification and just getting experience, uh, talking to clientele and teaching them and instructing them, that's a good way to get started. But if you don't have any of these and you're looking for something to put on the resume, instead of experience, I would probably go with skills. And, you know, these are things that you are going to excel at um, and things that you've had exposure to that may relate to the job. And so if you think about labs or classes, uh, the different assessments and the different things that you've learned there, you probably want to highlight that. Um, you know, you could include the different software you are capable of using, like Microsoft Office. Um, you know, if you speak a second language, that would be a good skill to put in there. And then writing as well. If, if you are a good writer and have experience with writing, um, depending on the type of job that you're looking for, that may also be a relevant skill. A lot of you are going to say, Chris, my only jobs I've had before are limited experiences, like working in a restaurant or fast food or answering telephone calls, being a uh, front desk associate. Well, there are things you could still communicate and there are certain skills you could still highlight in order to do that. Were you involved in opening procedures, closing procedures, maintaining a certain facility? Were you involved in communication, especially within this field? That's very important. Uh, communicating with people via email, over the telephone. So even though you feel like it may not be much, there's always things that you could change around and there's ways that you could highlight your previous experience in order to stand out and in order to show people that, hey, I have experience within a professional setting um, and I am qualified in order to do so for your facility. Like I said earlier, if you do not have job experience, but you have volunteering or internship experience, then list that first. But if you have both uh, a job or have had jobs and you have uh, volunteering, I'd probably, again, go with the most uh, relevant one first. Um, you know, that may be argued for certain people. Um, but again, they are looking for key things. They're looking to see if you're going to be a fit. So again, it should be laid out to the thing that is most relevant. But anyway, after your jobs, that's when you can put uh, the volunteering. And if you don't have any jobs, just list it first. The next thing we are going to add are certifications and organizations that you are a part of. And the good thing about these are that you could work on these at any time. And so there are plenty of certifications you could look up right now, see which ones are going to be relevant for your you know, field of study and your career path, and then pay for those certifications, study, and then pass an examination. And it's an easy way to just include different things and different experiences and different knowledge that you have. And many of the jobs that you first come into coming out of undergrad are going to require you to have a certification. So it's good just to get um, them out of the way and you know, you'll know you add to this the more you are within the field. Uh, but again, as I said in my certification video, you know, just be wary of what is actually going to be important and what's actually uh, going to be relevant as far as this field is concerned. Professional and academic organizations are different bodies that you can join and be a part of to keep up to date on the latest news and research and studies and findings within a certain field. And it's just something, again, to throw on the resume to show that you are involved within the field and within the career. And many of these, luckily, have very cheap rates uh, for current students. Uh, some may argue that, you know, putting it, you know, before things like awards and honors um, probably isn't the best fit. So again, I'll sort of leave that up to you as far as how you want to structure it. Uh, but certifications, again, they show that you've uh, gained knowledge and gained experience um, on a topic within the field. And a lot of those are easy to sign up for. You could sign up for CPR right now um, and pass it. And again, it's just something to beef up the resume and something to throw in there. Next are going to be honors and awards. And this can come in many different aspects of your life. 
Um, maybe it was in sports or maybe it was in academics. Uh, maybe you received a scholarship. And so any award or scholarship or honor is just going to show that you've excelled at a you know certain aspect of your life um, and you got recognized for it. So it's just... Uh, you know, it's good to list on there and it's something that could help beef up your resume. And if it was, you know, even in high school or something like that, just throw it in there. Um, you know, for a lot of you, that may not be too far removed, just a few years back. So whatever information sort of helps and, and sort of helps um, you stand out, then, you know, feel free to throw it in there. The only thing I'll say is make sure they are, again, somewhat relevant. If you got a participation trophy in a recreational softball league, that's probably not going to help you so much get a job. But if you were, let's say, the team captain on your collegiate baseball team, well, that's actually a pretty high honor and, you know, may, um, you know, just make you stand out as far as your work ethic is concerned. So again, highlight the scholarships, highlight the academic awards. Um, and again, it, if you're at the collegiate level, you played sports and, and you were recognized for that, then maybe something that's uh, good to throw on there. So I said earlier, if you didn't have a job or you know a volunteer or internship before to put the skills up top, uh, but if you do have all those things, then you can include them after honors and awards. And this is just going to list, again, the things you've picked up along the way. And you got to think about the exercise science and health field again and realize that the important things are going to be um, assessing physical fitness and instructing and prescribing physical fitness, um, interacting with clients. And so whether that be in labs or classes, um, you know, that you've picked up along the way, you can include those things. The only thing I'll say is that resumes should not be too long. So if you've already included all of this work experience and all this volunteer experience, really no need to throw them the skills at the end. It's just something that if you need to rely on, if you need to get your resume to a full page, it's good just to highlight, oh, I, I have actually conducted a VO2 max test before, Wingate test. Um, I've, I know how to do skin full testing and, and um, you know, take someone's body composition. So these are the things that may help you out um, and help may help you stand out to get that job. So that's it. Mr. Jonathan White here has a resume and this is, you know, a good uh, starting resume. This one probably includes a lot more experience than some of you have. Uh, but, you know, we have that objective, the education, the experience, the certifications, and it is very simple and very to the point, and that's what you want. You don't want different sections all over the uh, page to take away the reader's attention. Uh, you want them to be able to highlight these specific things, those different responsibilities, those different tasks, those different experiences that you have to see if you're even worth coming through uh, for an interview and worth hiring for the interview process. A couple more notes before we finish. Remember, have good spelling and punctuation, good grammar. Um, you know, if you spell education wrong, that's not going to look good when you are submitting a resume. So again, double check it, triple check it, and just make sure there aren't any errors on there. Again, gear the resume towards the job that you are looking for. Go in the job description, look at those responsibilities, and try to gear all of your experience in education to try to highlight that, hey, I've had experience uh, doing similar tasks or similar experiences, and I would be a good fit for this position. Remember, you can keep on building up your resume, so always try to advance to uh, new positions, try to learn new things, get new certifications, and just gain more experience. And the more you can beef up the resume, the better you will look. Thank you guys so much, and I'm looking forward to seeing those resumes. Have a good day, everyone.